Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at K nearest neighbor regression with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now, when you're dealing with K nearest neighbors, I'm going to try to draw you a quick picture here to make this as simple as possible, but this is really not a statistics course. What you're trying to do is this. You, are, you have an unknown data point right here mapped in space. It could be two dimensions, three dimensions, whatever, however many independent variables you have. And what you do is you use the, the data points that you know, you know the value for, you use those that are the neighbors of it to determine the value of the unknown one. So in this example here, let's say my, my K is five. So the unknown value is in the middle here. And I will use the values of these other data points where I do know the, the dependent variable value to, de to determine what this guy might be here in the middle. And so with regression, you're making a numeric prediction. So the knowledge I have of these five points around here is going to help me figure out the circle in the middle. If you're doing classification, you do a voting system here where, okay, this guy's a one, this guy's a zero, this guy's a one, and you add them up and whichever has the most votes, that's how you determine the unknown value right here in the middle. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be taking a look at a data set called turnout and we're going to try to predict someone's education level based on other independent variables that are in the model. And we're going to be, of course, using K nearest neighbor for that purpose. So right here, you can see I have all the modules that I'm going to be using in this particular video. This is a pretty short uh, preparation here. K nearest neighbor is pretty simple. Um, there are some problems with it. I believe it struggles with scaling, but um, you know, it's not intense in terms of the prep work. Okay, so we set up our various uh, modules here. We're going to import Pi dataset, import data from that. Uh, Pandas is what we're going to be using also, and some packages from sklearn. So the main star here is, of course, the K neighbors regressor right here in line four. Line three is just for splitting our data into train and test. And line five is, of course, that is the uh, particular function we're going to be using for calculating the mean squared error, which is a tool we will be using to evaluate the quality of our model. So for data preparation, it's really short and simple here compared to, again, the complexity of models we've done in the past. So I'm just going to paste this in right here. So our data frame, of course, is turnout. That is the star of our particular video. The independent variables are age, income, and voting, and the dependent variable is educate. So we're going to put all of these in their own respective objects, if you will. And then down here in line four, we are going to do separate our data into train and test. We've looked at this several times. These are all the different objects we're making, x train, x test, y train, y test. We're using this function right here, train test split to split it. We're going to be pulling from the X and the Y objects for X is for independent, Y is for dependent. And then our test size is going to be 30% of our data. And the random state is the seed number set to zero for duplication purposes. Okay, we're done with that. Now we're just about done. We're going to develop our model. So we're going to set our K to 11. That means we're going to use 11 neighbors to protect the person in the middle. That's how it's going to be. Um, you have to play with it to try to figure out what's best. We can, we can set it to something smaller. It doesn't really matter at this point. A lot of times, especially if you're doing classification, they like to set it to an odd number so that when there's a, the voting is taking place, there's a clear winner. So again, there's nothing magical about 11. I mean, I could have picked something else. Control enter. And so in the second line right here, I forgot to mention that we then use the fit function or fit method, whatever you want to call it, on our training data. And that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to see. I'm sure there's outputs you can find online if you want to get a better way of evaluating it, evaluating your model, excuse me. But for our purposes, we're just going to go ahead and evaluate the model by using the mean squared error. We want this value to be as low as possible. And I also need to add the caveat that the mean squared error is only useful for comparison purposes. It's not an absolute value. So in other words, we would have to create other models, for example, using other algorithms or perhaps changing the, the value of the K or whatever other hyperparameters there might be available for this particular algorithm and then compare them 
and generally the one with the lowest mean squared error is the most appropriate model for your purposes. Keeping in mind things about bias and uh, other problems with model, uh, modeling. So I press control enter and this right here is our value right here. Uh, let me explain what we did here. First we did prediction, so we used the predict function right here on our classifier. Uh, and we used the X test the testing set. And then of course down here we printed the mean squared error comparing the test set to the predictions. And then we have our value right here, which is only useful when you compare this to something else. And that is essentially all that is involved in conducting a K nearest neighbor um, for regression with Python. Now I just want to kind of review what we talked about and then wrap up this video. So in this video, we looked at how to perform and to conduct a k-nearest neighbor regression using Python. And so our goal was to predict people's education level, and that was what we were trying to do. So first, of course, we had to prepare our data. You can see that in the screen right here. We had to set up our data frame. Then we had to separate our independent and dependent variables from each other, and of course, create our training and test sets right here in line four. After we did that, we had to tell it, okay, how many neighbors do we want to use when we're trying to predict for the unknown value? And so we did that in line number one here, and then we actually ran our model. And then down here in this last cell, in the first line, we did our predictions based on the results of our classification model, which it wasn't a classification model, but based on the re results of our regression model, we then put it through our t test, uh, test uh, uh, data, and then we print out the results for the mean square error. And of course, there are other metrics and tools you can use for evaluation, but to keep our, vi our video short and simple, that's what we did here. If you want to know more about other tools that you can use, um, you can find lots of resources online or of course at our own website, educationalresearchtechniques.com. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Take care.